Why is it such a strange thing to be alive and aware of everything in 2023? I actually struggle to find the right word to describe what I feel most days. Surreal didn't work when I dropped it in here. To be honest, strange doesn't actually really work either. It's typically defined as being unusual or surprising in a way that is unsettling or hard to understand. On the one hand, yes, the pace and scope of change is unsettling. But no, it's not really hard to understand why we're not ready for it. So for now, I'll go with perplexing. It's still not perfect, but I'm going to use it because that's what GPT-4 suggested. And AI, or whatever this is, is a big part of this story. Even it's just another red herring or distraction from what we need to do. Or maybe on the other hand, it's just another signal. Get your shit together, humanity. GPT isn't far off, I don't think. Knowing the solutions, but bearing witness to inaction, like it said, is a big part of the reason why I do this. Bearing witness to inaction is less about watching a city burn or drown or both, or transmission lines not get built or buried and wondering, why the hell aren't we doing anything about all this? Inaction is usually the result of some combination of legacy power structures and banging our heads against the same specific wall over and over. So to be alive and aware in 2023 is to understand the surface area of a given problem, to identify the roadblocks, to establish a clear outcome, and then to throw the kitchen sink, you guys, at all the obstacles, figuring out how to go through and around and over and under them all at once. As they say, this is the way. As frustrating as it may be to me at times, to so many readers and listeners and in all my offline conversations. This is the way. Our desired outcomes may seem simple and obvious, but history tells us getting there is not. Otherwise, we'd be there already, right? So my work is to not only identify and define an exciting measurable outcome, like no new emissions, but to understand and illustrate the fullest picture of how we get there, which is what stands in our way, and to most transparently determine what we can control and what we can't. On the surface, it seems like it's easier than it's ever been, right? We have more accumulated and real-time knowledge of ourselves and the world around us than ever before. It's a bit much, frankly. You see, having all this knowledge doesn't automatically enable us to act faster or more thoroughly. Often, it's the opposite. Every new bit of data makes us even more painfully aware of some measure for which we're falling further behind. It's frustrating. However sexy the dashboard, and I love dashboards. Those things don't necessarily help us understand the myriad entangled causes behind those figures. We have to work to reveal the manifold, carrots and sticks deeply embedded in our systems, preventing radical change, often on purpose. However beneficial that change would be, however inequitable the suffering, however absolutely stupid it seems, watching those digits go up day after day, for not doing what we need to do, but instead of being so horrified that we drop everything to reduce that number to zero, we actually continue to subsidize many of the major perpetrators to the tune of trillions of dollars a year. I don't know any of them personally or even speak their language, but I feel like that's not what dolphins would do. The point is there's always good news, some incredible outcome that's just out of reach if we do the work. Because look, look unlike carbon emissions or even relatively fast-acting methane emissions, air pollution basically goes away when you turn off the source. People stop being poisoned right away. Clean water is similar in that respect. This, of course, can make the whole thing even more frustrating because turning off the source is complicated as hell. It's a journey, right? The whole thing. We have to get there first. We have to hike all the way to fucking Mordor to be able to destroy the ring. So to zero out something like air pollution or diabetes or malaria or the NFL, we have to evaluate the problem full stack. We have to do this. We have to deal with the massive industries, the companies within them, their shareholders, the products they make, and the people that buy and use them. We have to overcome their immense lobbying efforts. We have to deal with, better yet, replace the politics and politicians who golf with those lobbyists, who lunch with them, and then on Monday, vote to subsidize those industries again. The same politicians that are so old and have been in office for so long, trading stocks and being lobbied, that in many cases, they just let the industry literally write the laws that govern them, look it up, 
because it's more profitable for everyone involved, because those elected officials no longer understand what the hell is going on out there. So what else do we have to do? We have to understand existing laws and we have to try to write better ones from international down to the local level. I've got great news. We have a track record of success in dissecting and confronting big, complicated problems. We've come a hell of a long way. Now, you might argue that we've made so much progress by often just picking the low-hanging fruit we simply didn't understand before. For example, clean water, sanitation, smoking. Of course, we're drastically healthier than before we washed our hands or put fluoride in our water. Solving low-hanging fruit is a massive level up. So we should do more of that wherever we can. Even more great news, there's a hell of a lot of low-hanging fruit left. But, you know, like washing our hands, just because it's obvious, doesn't mean the journey there is easy. One, that other shit wasn't easy either. You just happen to live in a time when it's available and so it's obvious. Two, our planet is much more populated and her system's more extensively trashed than really at any point in our history. Three, we really have to wrap our heads around how much has changed here. Much of the work that needs to be done now requires us to come to terms with the understanding that the assumptions and tactics that got us here aren't what's going to carry us forward. We have to commit to compound action, too. But we also have to make better, different decisions than our predecessors if we want our children to be healthier, if we want to live not only longer but healthier, and to occur drastically reduced costs to everything and everyone across the board. Our ancestors industrialized the world once. No, they colonized the world. They industrialized the global north. A lot of people came up, but a lot of ecosystems suffered, and a lot of people were left behind. Over the next two decades, we get to reindustrialize it all over again. In our favor are the many, many lessons we learned along the way. We've learned, for example, that we are often indirectly the baddies, that we have an inability to embrace and utilize long-term thinking, to extend our most beneficial basic policies to everyone, or to do what is least profitable or least risky to the base. We can't keep shooting ourselves in the foot here. Here's what I come back to. What would the aliens think? Stick with me. There's a decent chance that sometime in our lifetimes, one of those monster telescopes and some AI discover we're not actually alone out here. Do you really want our first impression to be that we're a bunch of self-defeating ding-dongs? I do not. That's why we're chick givers. We give a shit. We're doing the thing. We have to open our eyes and explore the full surface area of our stupidest problems, take a deep breath, and remember we've been here before. We've learned from what worked in the past, and we got to toss very far away stuff like kids working in coal mines, and then take measurable action up and down the line until this is no longer perplexing.